Today's action figure review is the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Dragon Shield Black Ranger, otherwise known by many, the Armored Black Ranger. This is a Walgreens exclusive action figure here in the U.S. Elsewhere, it might be some other exclusive that I'm not familiar with. Anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging to start off this review. As per take of every single video review on this channel, up close in your face. And here we've got the front of the packaging, which looks nice with that lovely artwork of the armored Black Ranger, which continues on the side here with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the top. On this side here, we've got another look at that artwork. Looks pretty good. On the back of the packaging, we've got a promotional shot of the Black Ranger figure in its computerized form here, as you can tell by this straight paint application with no sloppiness right Obviously, sarcasm, right? Nothing else to really talk about here because there's no bio for the character, nothing like that, which is kind of sad, but it is a carrying on trend with the Lightning Collection so far. Here's a look at the sad onion face. You can see how much he's creeped out this time around. On the bottom of the packaging, we've got a barcode in case you want to look this figure up for yourself. If you don't have a Walgreens store around you, more power to you. That's it for the packaging. Let's put it aside. Let's pick you back up. He does have a tendency to fall down on his own, especially since he's holding his weapon of choice here, which happens to be a little heavy. With that said, yes, this is not the way the figure is actually packaged. I've already taken the liberty of putting on the alternate head, which is his civilian form. Zack looks pretty good. Um, probably one of the better sculpts out of the uh, Mighty Morphin team. So far out of the Lightning Collection, it kind of looks like Walter Jones a lot more than Kimberly's um, face sculpt, which you understand isn't perfect either. But yeah, I mean, this looks pretty good. I'm not complaining about it. Uh, basically, the print job is pretty straightforward. Doesn't seem to be any sloppiness to it. The eyebrows look nicely clean. So do the eyes and the lips. And yeah, even the hair looks great. Nice sculpting to it. Um, I would have preferred if they went with his Season 2 look, but whatever. It is what it is. Anyway, now that we took a look at that, let's go ahead and remove the head here. So we can pop on the actual head that comes straight out of the packaging. And here is the helmet. With the very nice Mastodon sculpt on it. Um, and that's pretty much all that she wrote. Because the rest of it is kind of sloppy. Which seems to be an issue recurring to every wave of this series so far. Uh, we do have some sloppiness to the paint job at the helmet. Where you can see there is some fingerprints here. A little bit of smudging. Because somebody didn't let this dry before touching. And then we've got a little bit of some crooked sloppy work here. Right around this area where my thumbnail. My disgusting thumbnail is actually pointing at. But on the right side everything seems to be clean. It's just the left side here. Especially around the lower portion of the chin. Where the silver doesn't go all the way unfortunately. It kind of stops there at the very bottom of the line as you can see. Anyway... That's pretty much the only real issue I've got with the paint application because everything else is pretty basic when you think about it. All you got to do is paint some diamonds around the boots and the forearms. And then, of course, you got the dino buckler, or should I say the power morpher, which does have the nice power coin here that is, in fact, the Mastodon symbol. As you can see, it is pretty clean. Looks a lot better than the Pink Rangers, which you really couldn't tell what it was. And it does look pretty fair. I mean, it doesn't make me want to repaint this like I had to do with the Mighty Morphin Pink Ranger figure. And I'm going to keep bringing that up, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I found the better looking figure, in all honesty, out of maybe four other Black Ranger figures that I saw at my Walgreens. This is probably the best one that I could actually find here. So, you know, it's not perfect, but for what it is, it is a lot better than some of the other figures I have in my collection. They just really need to touch up on a few other things, like the paint application, and maybe sometimes the sculpting of the civilian heads. Other than that, this is a really good figure, especially with the fact that 
Hasbro is listening to us and they have improved the articulation quality with the shoulders as you can see. I can move both with no problems whatsoever. Doesn't feel like it's too tight at all. Not too loose. Doesn't feel like it's going to snap on me anytime soon. So I have no worries about this figure lasting for a very, very, very long, or uh, very small time. I mean, it is going to last a very long time in my collection. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much it. Not much else to really show off here. So what would you say we go through the articulation on the figure? He does have your common ball joint at the head with a hinge joint at the neck. The shoulders are universally jointed with some inward and outward movement. And then you've got your full 360 rotation. Also a butterfly joint, which is nice. Bicep swivel cut, double jointed elbows. Swivel cut at the wrist with a hinge joint for inward and outward movement. You got your ball joint at the upper torso, an ab crunch to allow that much forward and that much back. And then the legs have the ball joints at the hips with this much kicking forward, nothing going back. And then you still can't pull off a full JCVD split, but it does feel like it does have a little more give than some of the other figures of this line, or maybe it's just me. Anyway, we got a swivel cut at the, uh, bicep, or bicep, uh, <laughs> oh, um, how can I forget this spot? Thigh, right, we have a thigh swivel cut. We got double jointed knees, which is a little loose at the lower portion, being tight also at the upper portion, but you can still pull it off, very nice. And you got your swivel cut at the boot section with the scary clicking joints. At the ankles, which again, there needs to be some improvements here in time. And then we've got the lovely ankle rocker pivot, which is on par with Hasbro's Marvel Legends, which it should be. Right, anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories that the figure comes with. Starting off with a simple one. The Blade Blaster, which does have a pretty clean paint job here. There's no sloppiness. Uh, doesn't seem like much bleeding here. Uh, I, I stand corrected now that I'm focusing in on it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's not perfect, but then again, what are you going to do, right? Uh, one thing I have noticed is that this is a very stiff plastic. Um, probably a change in the quality that they are using here. Um, I do fear that this could snap if not careful. It's that bad, but I mean, it's not like I'm going to put it in the figure's hands anytime soon. Just going to leave it in the holster as it's meant to be. I'm going to lower this so you can see a little bit more. And uh, let's go into the next accessories that the figure comes with, which is some alternate hands. We got a balled up fist for the right. And a karate chopping hand for the left. And that's your alternate hands here. Pretty standard for the lightning collection. Yay. Alright, so with that said, we also have, which has been in his hands the whole time of this video recording, the uh, Power Axe, which is pretty much similar to the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Red Ranger and Gold Ranger 2 pack which comes with the Power Blaster in full-on combination. There's no difference whatsoever. It's the same thing. And this little piece can actually come all the way down, so you can put it in its axe mode, or you can just put it back and, you know, have it in its blaster mode. Oh, yeah, and also, if you bring it down all the way this way, you can actually, you know, put the rest of the weapons together to form the Power Blaster. Pretty much this would be the area that catches the power bow, right? Not much else to really say about that, so let's go ahead and just put that right back where it was. So, there you go, there's that. Oh, and uh, one other thing that I want to showcase that the figure comes with is, of course, a power blast effect, which looks pretty cool. And if you hold this bit right here, it kind of looks like a translucent blue pumpkin, does it not? Happy Halloween, even though it's kind of light. Anyway, it's very nice energy blast effect. As you can see, we got that swirl going on there and the full blast going straight out with some of that explosion here at the tip with that, once again, blue pumpkin. But as you can with all other blast effects, you can pop it in 
to the weapon. And you can have this very dynamic looking displayable piece, which does create a little bit of some heaviness for the figure. So you do have to adjust the joints in order to get the figure to hold it. No problems without falling over, which is the best part about articulation. You can adjust the figure to your liking and can hold a pose for the most part of it. So let's try that again. Yeah, that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do. It is a very heavy piece, but um, that's pretty much it. That is the Armor Black Ranger figure. There's not much else to really address about the figure. It's a very cool figure, and um, it's not really recommended, to tell you the truth, because it was only a very nice maybe two minutes use for the Black Ranger in one episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Did he actually go for this? But it was enough to get an SH Figure Arts version out of this. I don't remember if we got a legacy version of this form, but we do have it for the Lightning Collection, and I think this is the more superior version, to tell you the truth, even though there is a difference in the gap of years, being that the SH Figure Arts came out quite a few years ago, yeah, definitely there's going to be a lot of room of improvements and also in the sculpting. And plus, this is also a new toy company that is working on Power Ranger figures. This is not Bandai America anymore. So yeah, things have changed for the better, of course. They just got to work on a few other things like the plastic quality and even the paint application. Other than that, if you want to get this figure... By all means, he is pretty cool to add to your lightning collection. Also, if you are a completionist, well, obviously, you're going to get the figure. But before I go, there's one other thing that I need to do, and that's some size comparisons. And the only thing that I can really even think about showing off is just the rest of the Mighty Morphin figures that are available right now. Whether it's in stores or a Hasbro Pulse site. But here's a good look at them. Every one that we've got so far out of the Mighty Morphin Ranger team. We do have some villains, but they're not available at the moment to showcase here. So here's the rest of the Rangers so far with Mighty Morphin White, Armor Red Ranger, Fighting Spirit Green Ranger, Pink Ranger, all compared to the Dragon Shield Black Ranger. And that's going to wrap up this video, and I'm just going to leave this possibly even for the thumbnail of this video. So, if you have any questions or comments you know to do, hit it down below in the comment section of the video. If you liked today's video review, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to give me a sub up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Don't forget to throw in the towel. And until next time, my friends, this is your unprofessional toy reviewer, Redis Power, signing off saying thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you whenever you see me.